it might not be what you think. For my money, the scariest legend in the game is usually not the best, most broken, overwhelming 9 out of 10 cute character, but rather a mix of someone underrated and underplayed with some sneaky beaky tricksies on their side. A niche pick that, when their weapons become meta, they're suddenly very terrifying. Because you're not going to play against them all too often, so you can bet that when you do, the person wielding them is a bit of a specialist, a bit of an expert, and they probably know the ins and outs, the cheese. Of course, everyone's got their own construal of the world, and so what's scary, what's underrated, and what's not is going to be entirely dependent on your experience. Me? It's gotta be Zariel. Would you believe it if I told you, this is not even the first time I'm making a video like this on Zariel. They've been what I feel like is overlooked for a very long time. I made that video like a couple years ago and my opinion on them has only shot upwards. Before I divulge all the details about what I think makes Zariel great, there are some things I should mention first. Very quiet music all of a sudden. Uh, Brahala's had a few Mondo changes in the past handful of weeks. And there's a reason that I'm not going to talk about it today. It's very simple, I just uh, haven't played in nearly a month. So I will get to all of those eventually, don't you worry, but today let's just focus on the celestial we got on the screen. Lots of plans for upcoming videos and yeah, 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 yeah. Zariel actually has one of the best sig hits in the entire game, that's not an exaggeration. <gasps> I'm dead. Uh, uh, there's no way I make it back, right? <laughs> just, that's crazy. That's one of the few times I saved someone and it's actually strategic. Sorry, can you tell it's been a while? <laughs> the last videos I made were recorded like three weeks before they even went up. So that's is a big time gap here. A big gap between my attack and where they actually were too. Anyway, you've seen the power of two of the three gauntlet sigs now. <laughs> I mean, look at that distance I just got. That's crazy and I'm gonna live. I'm good. I didn't even have to hit that GCN sig for it to be extremely effective. I covered that entire jump outward with a big leap, a big move. And m moving on, back to a very quiet map. Oh, how I missed this. Uh, you already saw two really good uses for it. Offstage, GCing it, using it to recover. Probably not a great decision there. I might have saved them when I could have just gimped. I guess I get the grandpa anyways, okay. Of course, there's the height that you're leaping up, but it's not just about that. It's also about the speed at which you're jumping. It's so fast. You can't react to that jump upward. It's too quick. What you have to react to is this little hand charge, and it goes by so fast. I mean, look at that. It's crazy. Unless someone's just holding it down, it does kind of look like a standard gauntlet movement. Compare the upward speed to something like crosses Ensig on the gauntlets, which of course, great move on its own. It's super, super powerful, ton of force and all that, catches jumps, but the way that it reaches the sky is much, much slower. I can't believe I didn't die. And that's just such a big perk. You can catch people completely off guard. Part of why I'm harping on this characteristic of speed is because when you're playing against something that you're not used to, something unusual, something not really played all too often, there's that new effect. I guess I am talking about something new. I saved them. See, this is what I'm talking about. It's, it's, no, it's not, it, is very strategic all of the time. Speed and your ability to react to stuff is such a big deal when you're playing against something unfamiliar. We think of reaction time as like this flat value, but that's not really how it works. A lot of it is about preparation. Also, this map apparently is bugged and the ceiling's very short, so maybe I can get a bow gimp in like white if I can bait them up to the sky. I was hoping they'd recover. Is that gonna kill? No, almost though. One more hit surely would have done it. That's all right. I'm gonna save the bomb here. Also, the speed stat, I'm running speed stance, so I've got five speed, I've got uh, six strength, four decks, seven defense, great stats. But yeah, like what I was saying, a lot of reaction time is not just the pure reaction itself in the moment, but the preparation towards that reaction. So your body knows, oh, this is a situation I'm familiar with, something I'm uh, I'm used to. And so you're able to react to that faster than you would a completely novel stimulus. So when I'm talking about things like leap speed, right, where you're just leaping in the air super fast, you're also not really stuck in recovery time for very long. Look at this, I'm good, I'm chilling, I'm still fighting. It's going to have a much more dramatic effect when it's on a character that you don't play against all too often, something that you're not used to. Punishing things in fighting games is really all about those milliseconds of difference between okay this is this is a comfortable position i'm in and this is a position where yeah something uh, might go a little bit wrong here like that for example where the positioning was just so slightly off that i was unable to get that combo i was hoping that like cannon side me or something i don't it's and the platform's messing it up i can um please kill me <laughs> in game in game in game, in game. I didn't even die. I'm sure we've all had those matches and those moments where it feels like we're just so slightly off and punishing things is, I don't know, the timing. It, we just keep trying over and over and over again. We're missing by like a hair. And then we try to do it again at the same time and then we miss by a hair again. Like I'm trying to emulate it right now. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of just mashing, but maybe that's part of it. But what I'm talking about are these little timing cycles where maybe our attack is off by just, just a hair, just a little tiny bit, but that makes our next attack also off by a little tiny bit. And we could fix that by just having that one moment of awareness 
where you catch yourself and you're like, okay, th I gotta, I, I, I gotta stop something. Is this the third Thunder Guard? There's no way. How did my weapon go down there? I don't understand. Anyway, before I get back on topic, I guess I should mention if my audio is messed up in this video, I, uh, I tried to fix it. I'm sorry. Like I said, I haven't recorded anything in nearly a month. So when I opened up OBS, for some reason, all of my settings were changed or gone, or it said it could not detect any devices. And, uh, I just did a little bitty mini hotfix. So, and then they give me the other extremely quiet map that I love. Thank, thank you. Anyway, if there's any audio delay, that's why is what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry that you're having to follow my train of thought here and it's very jumbled and jumping around. If you forgot what I was talking about, I understand. Basically, you can get caught in patterns and it's hard to break yourself out of it in the moment. I meant to reverse that one. Overall, it's just a very uncomfy, frustrating feeling. It feels like, why am I just not better? Why why are they getting away with this? Why can't I do this? And what I'm about to propose to you is that it's a, it's a little more complicated than it seems. That kind of feeling can actually be induced by a good opponent. And that's one of those things that kind of separates a good player from an adept player, I would say. Recognition of the moment, of when you can go for punishes, when you can't, when you can bait an opponent, good spacing. That was so close. We're good, we're good, we're good. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> that hurt my voice a little bit. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. Uh, but yeah, basically what I'm saying is that a player with like good spacing, good timing, all of that, uh, knowledge of their character, which is pretty relevant for this topic right here. I'm gonna die. I'm actually dead. Um, I am lacking knowledge in the character. Can I just say the reason why I thought of making this video is because I was gonna do a random 1v2 and then I was like, I don't want to play Zariel. So there's a little like buffer for myself there. Um, I actually almost saved another person by accident. But yeah, with mix ups, movement, I mean pretty much everything. A good player can make you think that, oh, I'm just playing bad. No, they're making you play bad. Every match is between two people and everything that someone does influences the other person. I think one of the easiest ways to understand this concept is with the example of spacing. Imagine you're playing against someone and uh, they're on the cannon, right? And they always stare you from 10 centimeters away. Most of my audience is from America. Uh, 4.382964 inches away, right? And then suddenly you're playing against someone that starts staring you, there's the unfamiliarity mayhaps, from let's say six inches away. Just that tiny little difference is gonna make such a big deal in your familiarity with the matchup. All that conditioning in your mind of, oh, I see this move, I can punish it, it just gets thrown out the window. I don't think I earned that. But yeah, it completely throws you off because your automatic instinct is to think, oh, I, I can hit this. Maybe it's the, the jump height that you're used to or the dash distance that you think, oh, I could punish it from here and then suddenly you can't. It, it's this weird, it, it does something weird, funky to your brain. And unusual characters are like that dialed to 11. You see what I mean? Because it's not just spacing, it's timing, it's speed, it's hitboxes. Oh, hitboxes. You're able to get away with some crazy stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because when people are caught off guard, they're not going to be as precise. You're able to, you know, maybe use two sigs in a row in the same spot. And it kind of works out. <laughs> Why does I sound like goofy there? <laughs> Gorsh. I guess I should then actually talk about the sigs. Because some of the hitboxes are crazy. And I've really only shown off like three and a half. Let's just go through this rapid style. And sig, we already know. Look at the distance. Look at the carrying power, the speed. I got to, no, I was going to save them. And then they fast fell. Did I say carrying power? Because I need to say it again. Because carrying people off stage with gauntlets into the blast zone. That just killed. That just killed. When it hits, you're probably robbing someone of a jump. Because, you know, it hits in the sky there. And then you're brought all the way out here against gauntlets. And then, <laughs> oh, no, I didn't have another jump. Okay, well, that was a bad demonstration of illustration but you know what i'm trying to say going out wide against gauntlets especially when they can use this to recover themselves they they can go low or go wide it doesn't, doesn't really matter and then it hits like that up there yeah it's, it's, it's a very very good move and then on a map with slants, you can use it also to spike. Whatever, I've sung the praises of that enough. Let's talk about this move, which if you played against Zario, this is probably the one that gets it a lot. And trust me, even very, very high level players struggle against this move. It's hitbox is incredible. It's a disjoint. It's just, it's so powerful. And then having that grounded option on gauntlets, which kind of can struggle to kill on the ground a little bit. Very good. It's one of those things that between NSIG and SideSIG, they're both just so good that it's hard to say that one of them is better than the other. Cause like this one is just so much utility, so much usage off stage allows you to do so much. And then this is just so unbelievably reliable. It's so good in twos. It catches people for so long. I imagine this is probably the, the very frustrating one. If unlike me, you've played against a ton of Zarials. Now because NSIG and SideSIG are so good, it kind of makes DownSIG seem like not as good in comparison. But trust me, that's also a very powerful move. I should have done that the other way. I don't know what I'm doing. Again, okay, not necessarily an expert here, but I guess that shows the point, which is that if someone was way better and way more experienced with Zariel, th it would be terrifying, right? Gauntlets are a weapon that are so good at getting into your stacked zone and making you feel like you have to throw out an attack. And what's really good at punishing slightly missed close range options 
a stacked KOing move. Now, we can be honest with each other here. There are some moves that are quite similar, like uh, Sentinel Qatar Down Sig, Core Gauntlet Down Sig, that I would argue are, you know, just slightly better. I, there's, I got a wall touch there. But uh, comparison is the thief of joy, as they say. So we can we can just look at this one and say, like, look, eh, there might be others in the game, but on its own in a vacuum, look at that. Still good. And I know I've made some comparisons already in this video, but uh, rules for me, not for thee. When this recording is over, I really have to pee. K, fire, PK, PK. K is the potassium letter in the atomic alphabet. Anyone understand what I just said? <laughs> Any takers? Anyone want to uh, want to take the risk there? Basically, it's a great move in its own right. And as long as it doesn't drop, having that kind of option is fantastic. Also, it KOs off the top. I don't know if they're... Are they going to ground pound? What is... They're not going to ground pound. Well, I timed that for the ground pound. It was a bit unfortunate. It could have been the KO off the top again. And um, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why this happens in every video. But uh, but I'm just going to down sig. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. KOing off the top is nice and consistent. Because it doesn't matter where horizontally you are. And you can still get the get the nice knockout. I'm going to get a reverse gimp from this. And this is going to be... They taunted instead of jumping! No, I'm dead! It's consistent because it doesn't matter the horizontal distance because it's not going to kill off the top. It is a vertical distance. It's going to help. Okay, whatever. Let's move on to the bow sigs because these are also... I am dead again. It doesn't even matter. <gasps> they saved me and now I'm dead again. It doesn't matter again. I'm in a lot of pain, as you can see. There's not a lot of oxygen, as you can hear. And look, that move is not going to kill because it hit in light orange. Do you expect it to kill in light orange? No, but it's going to kill now because in the red and it doesn't matter. <gasps> Big bow. All right, let's take two of this. Bow sigs, bow and sig. Very good move. You can see there's a lot of disjoint, just like the, the gauntlet side sig. And having disjoint is great because it means you're not in danger. And it traps people for a long time, so it's kind of frustrating to get hit by. Very good in twos. And then it can kill if they're at a kajillion damage, even if it bounces. Part of what helps to make this sig really good is not just the sig itself, but the, the weapon that it's on. Bow, it's so good at controlling space. And this is really all of Zariel's kit. Bow and gauntlets are both weapons that can kind of take control of the pace of the match. And then suddenly you're in the orange after like one interaction even though you're like Magyar, right? And and you're like, what is what is even happening? What is happening to me? I gotta get back to the stage. I gotta get back to safety. And then all of a sudden, this move hits you. And if I'm a good Zario player, I hit it right there. There we go. And, and you're out of jumps and, and you're trying to recover back to the stage. And it doesn't matter because it just spikes you against the wall. It goes once again to that whole uncomfortability feeling, right? It's uh, there's there's spoke. If you're struggling the whole game to find your footing, then like what's one of the worst things that could happen? A signature that spikes you off the map and makes you lose your footing even more. So that's like great right off the bat. And then you got the side sig, which also you can use to GC recover. Both weapons have really great GC recovery options. Great for combos like that. This also spikes off the map. And then it leaves you at this like weird height. It priority, very interesting there. Uh, also carrying people off the map, a very uh, powerful technique on the bow, which is great at edge guarding. Not if you're me though. But yeah, it leaves you at this weird height, kind of like the Bryn side sig on the bow if you miss it, where it's just like slightly too high for some things to hit and, and slightly uh, too low for a lot of like anti airs to hit. It's, it's just, it's just funky. It's a very, I got you. I, you don't got me though. Big boot beater, changing lives in the experimental queue. Actually can't even remember what I was saying. It's <laughs> it's one of those days. Look at that, I'm good, I'm safe, and they're dead. Very, very, very fascinating character. Just so wonky. I don't think I need to talk about both side sig too much because I imagine this is one of the sigs that uh, if you've played against Zariel's yourself, you probably know about as well. But uh, yeah, it's speed, it's distance, it can be hard to punish. The more you play against it, the more it's easier. And this is kind of like the point of what I was saying at the beginning where if something is unusual, it's a lot harder. And if you're used to it, it's way easier. So especially moves that have properties like this that leaves you slightly higher than you might like or, or moves really fast is going to be something that you struggle with and, and, until you get used to it. But it's not like the recovery time is extremely broken or anything. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a lot, but you can still punish it like that. For example, if someone uses it in a bad spot, you're ready for it. I think they thought I was going to down it because so my side sig is the word that I was going to say. And then speaking of down sig, I down sig and it gives me essentially another ground pound. Look at that. So this move obviously going to be useful off stage because if you do this on stage, it's just going to send them straight upward, which sometimes it can kill and you can catch a dodge, whatever, but it's going to be mostly useful for like a GC off stage where you can completely block off someone's options like that and, and then just follow up with a clean kill 
afterwards. If my memory serves, clearly not something to rely on, but uh, I think this is one of those moves that was really not great, and then it got buffed and it looped around to being like extremely good again. Speaking of like Dusk, right? That is the same thing that happened with a lot of his sigs, where uh, Dusk sigs are kind of crazy. That one, especially, and then the side sig doesn't have much recovery time. This is not a Dusk video, what am I talking about? Yeah, you don't get that much momentum there, you can't side charge it, of course, but yeah, you can use it to just completely counter ground pounds with a GC down sick. Could not ask for better timing there, even if I wanted to. The hitbox, as you can see, it, it hit stacked there. The hitbox is really great. The arrows travel down from where you are, so it's going to be very, very effective at catching people. Give me a weapon here, please! And speaking of hitboxes, one thing I forgot to mention about this end sig that's super, super great is not only- Oh, that was a good weapon toss. Not only is the hitbox that's out wide great for range, but it's also great for getting the distance. You can see where they get launched from is not where I am, it's where the hitbox is. That extra three character whiffs, whatever it is, it it's so useful, because the move doesn't need to KO to be super powerful, right? As long as you're getting the distance, putting people in uncomfortable positions, maybe getting a ledge trap out of it, putting a stop to all their momentum because it takes so long to finish. Whatever you're doing, it just means they're going to be launched out further, because they're starting out further. So it's a super- I couldn't get that. Then now I'm dead. I'm alive. Okay, now- now I'm dead. But whatever, whatever. I've talked about all the SIGs now. I briefly mentioned the stats. I, I, some of them I talked about more in depth than others. That's okay. You, you kind of get the gist, right? They all have a great amount of utility. They all have their... Like, look at, look at that. I'm in the middle of talking. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, Zario is a character where all six of their SIGs not only are usable, not only are great, but all of them have straight robbery potential, which cannot go understated. But I've said my piece. This will be the last game. This will not be the last game. Hopefully this was coherent enough to help you explain to, to you, to me, why Zario- Why did I do that? Why Zario gives me the heebie-jeebies. And maybe it helps you understand why the character that induces such cortisol in you has a similar effect. Either way, this shows me a couple things. It's, uh, number one, I like talking about these kind of unseen intricacies of Brahalla. <laughs> Breaking news, Guy figures out he likes talking about what he finds interesting. And number two, maybe I should play a little more Zariel, because I had a lot of fun today. Only thing that's left is to get a bit of redemption. What's happening? I'm just waiting for a horn to spawn. Don't look at the clock.